Why do you have to say that you're Mary Magdalene, even if you are? Surely it would be better just to keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, it's certainly been my preference in the past. And when I met AJ, I think I said something very similar to him. Even if you are Jesus, why do yeah. we have to talk about it? <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but look, there's a lot of reasons why I think it's important to say the truth about who I am. I feel it's important to my relationship with God, but also to have personal integrity and in my relationship with others and with myself. Um, in the past, I've felt just afraid of how other people would respond to me saying it. And I've also felt that my experience, it's difficult for other people to relate to because they're not having the same experience of having had a life on earth before and in the spirit world and then coming back and having another body and another experience and coming to terms with the memories of all of that and the psychological aspects of that. I felt that people won't be able to relate to it, so why should we talk about it? I felt that, um, it, you know, even speaking about my experience of memories at times because I know that it's so different from what other people experience, I felt like people are just going to feel like I'm crazy and even at times I've felt like this is a little bit crazy. I feel a little bit crazy and I didn't, I didn't like feeling those things so I just wanted to avoid the whole thing. But I have gone through this process of coming to really feel in my heart how important it is that I, that I am honest and open about who I am. Probably the first thing is that I'm involved in giving public seminars and lectures uh, teaching divine truth. And one of the really key principles involved <laughs> in, in the teaching of divine truth is that uh, how important it is to truthfully present yourself to others. Uh, and so if I was to stand up in front of people and hold a belief about who I am and keep it to myself, then I would be a hypocrite mm. when it, in terms of what we're teaching. And also I feel that it, me saying who... I believe or who I am and the experiences that I have up front or at least giving people the opportunity to know those things up front certainly we don't lead every seminar with that yeah. but we're open about that with people um, and we have all these video material on YouTube now that makes it very open and clear for people to see and I feel that is actually most loving to people because it gives them the opportunity first up, before they decide if they want to listen to anything else, to know who they're hearing this information from and what those people feel about themselves. I mean, we know it about ourselves, but for them it might be a matter of opinion. Um, but at least they have the opportunity to make a well-informed decision in that if we were to hide those things, people might feel really tricked or cheated when we were eventually open about it. And I feel this is most loving f towards them, that they know who we are uh, from the beginning. The second thing is that I feel that, well, I know that all of God's laws respond to truth. That God's designed his whole universe around these principles that uh, mean that the laws act with us when we are truthful and that they respond to us positively, to us opening to more truth and to more love. And so even though at times I might feel like, gosh, even more people would listen to us if we just hid who we were, <laughs> you know, because this message that we're teaching is very loving and logical and it's practical and people can experiment with it and know if it's true. And, and there's been times where I've thought, well, if... We didn't say who we were, which is what puts a lot of people off initially. More people might listen and they might have more happiness in their life. But if, if I, if I honour the truth that I know, that all of God's laws respond to us being truthful, <clears throat> then, I, then I have faith that by me being honest and truthful, the best set of circumstances will work out for everyone involved. And the, the most possibility for love to grow will exist if I am truthful mm. because then I'm more in harmony with God's laws and so I'd be crazy not to be truthful. So that's probably the biggest thing that I feel about um, 
being open about who I am is that if I wasn't open about who I, who I am, then not only would I be lacking just personal integrity and lacking the um, humility to deal with whatever people decided to feel about me as a result, like I'd be hiding behind a facade and trying to present, prevent other people's true feelings. And by hiding the truth, I, pre I actually prevent other people exposing the truth of how they really feel inside of them. So not only that, but also I'd be in disharmony with God's laws. Mm. And to me, I don't want to live my life in disharmony with God's laws anymore, even though I'm still out of harmony <laughs> with lots of them. I'm really um, attempting to bring my will into harmony with them because I know that's how we grow and that's how we can know God. That's yeah. pretty cool. And are you finding now that you've actually... From when I first met you to now, I feel like you're embracing who you are, like exponentially like it's completely different from when yeah. I first met you yeah, sure. and are you finding like um that there's a real proof you know like for you like this the sense of a real confirmation of those things with God's laws as you do this definitely Eloisa I'm I'm much happier and the more fear I confront the happier I become yeah. and I'm still not happy all of the time there's still lots of fears and grief inside of me but the more willing I am to embrace myself the more of that gets dealt with yeah. When I first met you, I was so afraid of just even exploring emotionally the truth that I knew about myself that I hid it not only from you, but I really tried to suppress it inside of myself. And I was, I was unhappy, as you probably saw, you know, and I wasn't yeah. confident. because I, and, and that couldn't change in me until I... And it has been a gradual process that I've been going through of, of coming to terms with the fact that if I'm humble... <laughs> to what I already feel um, and what's being triggered by this knowledge of who I am. And if I embrace the truth about those things, then, then I'll grow. You know, yeah. That's the only way that I've been able to grow. And that's, I think that's why you see sort of an exponential thing happening because when I'm in complete denial, everything's shut down. And as soon as I decided to open up more to emotion and open up more to like being truthful about who I am in every situation, then it is, um, it is an exponential growth that's possible. It's not linear anymore. It's sort of exponential. Mm -hmm. And I certainly feel that in the last six months or so since we've had different... And I spoke about this recently at a seminar. We had some... We've had various media interactions over the years. And for me, it's always triggered all of those fears that I've had about... How, who's going to see this? What are they going to think of me? People are going to recognise me. Oh, you know, like, <laughs> oh, nightmare, you know. Um, and they're going to be attacking. They already think we're idiots. They're just making fun of us. And all of this stuff, I'd go into an interview just sitting on that stuff, not, not releasing the fear and grief I had around it. And because of that, I didn't even really express myself very well in those interviews. I didn't didn't come off really as myself, I don't think. I wasn't really being myself. And it was just a really negative experience for me. In the last six months, I decided I had a different choice. <laughs> and that was to be more humble to the whole process, which if you think about it, if I'm saying, you know, that I've been teaching divine truth or being a part of the teachings of divine truth for five years, that's a long time coming, that decision, mm. to actually just be humble to this this media interaction stuff and that's because I think it was such a long time coming because it triggered some of my really really deep fears deeply held fears about being well known about being attacked about appearing crazy and but I you know eventually <laughs> understood that I had a choice here and that mm. could that would be to be myself and not just say who I am but be myself Mary Magdalene in the interview express myself <laughs> and um, while there's still a lot of other emotions within me that affect how those interviews go I felt a lot happier in those interviews because I wasn't trying to minimize or apologize or avoid who I was there's still other emotions that cause people to think that to dismiss me sometimes because I have feelings of 
um, feeling insignificant inside of myself and so I attract that. Or There's other things that go on. But certainly the projections that are, you know, the, the beliefs that other people have about us that I can feel that we're crazy or silly or somehow bad, they don't, they, because I've decided to be myself and be humble, I actually work through a lot of those emotions before I got into that interview chair. Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, I had fun. For some parts of it, I had fun and I thought that would never be possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I just thought it would be the worst thing in the world for any camera to be <laughs> aimed at me. <laughs> and while I didn't have fun in the sense that I felt, oh, yeah, it's great, there's cameras on me, <laughs> yeah. I had the simple joy of just being able to be myself in a situation where I hadn't been able to, I hadn't, my fears, my listening to my fears had meant that I didn't allow myself to be myself. So, yeah, I feel that my happiness is improving all of the time and I'm really getting this proof that God's laws do respond to truth and our humility. And it's sort of crazy how good it is when you do that. Like to actually test the theory, not just talk about it, mm -hmm. and to feel the experience of not only change within yourself, but change in what you attract. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you, sister. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank for you. For your time and, and sharing your life. It's been cool. As I said to you, I think a book <laughs> would be awesome. <laughs> so oh, FAQs, a visual I'm book. Ha I'm happy to start here. <laughs> but thank you very much for spending the time. And it's did, my pleasure. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. And Anytime. Thanks to yeah, thanks Lena guys. and Igor yeah. on the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Okay.